All right, so this is part two of our 6.2 video, and we are going to be learning how to do conversions with compa capacity or volume. So we are going to, right now, start with our standard conversions. Um, standard conversions are going to be our gallons, quarts, pints, and cups. So on this first one, I will do it for us, and we are going to be using our conversion equation where we start with what we know. Oops, let me get a different color here so you can see it nice and bright. So we're going to start with what we know times our conversion factor and gives us um, the amount in gallons. So we know that we have 25 quarts. We're going to put that on top, just like we did yesterday, over 1. So we start with what you know, 25 quarts over 1, and we are going to be changing quarts to gallons. So we always put whatever is over here on the bottom so we can cancel those out. So we'll put quarts to gallons, and then after we figure out what we need to convert, we need to find our factor. So I'm going to pull up what we did the very first day of this chapter. We drew this um, diagram here. And we are comparing quarts to gallons, so we need to know how many quarts are in a gallon. Here's my gallon, the G. There's one, two, three, four of those green Qs, so four quarts equals one gallon. We are going to use that as our conversion factor. So I'm going to put four quarts, because there was four Qs, inside the one gallon. So the quarts are going to go on the bottom this time. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is simplify. So quarts can be simplified. Um, four can be divided by two or four to simplify it, and two or four do not fit into 25. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply at this point. So we do 25 times one is 25 gallons over four. So we're going to have to do some division here to get this answer. So we're going to take our 25. Remember, it's always the top number divided by the bottom number. That's how you put it in a calculator. You could put this in a calculator if you wanted. 25 divided by 4. I'm going to show you how to do it here just to write it out so you have some experience with that. So 4 will fit into 24 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24. We have one left over, so it'll be six and one fourth. That's how you would write your fraction. Or we could also add a zero here, bring it down. Four goes into 10. Remember, you shoot your decimal straight up when you have a decimal. So four goes into 10 twice. That will give us eight. Put another zero to bring down. Four goes into 20 five times, and six, then Five times four is 20, so we have no remainder there. And it'd be six and 25 hundredths. Of, and then we'd write the gallon. So 6.25 gallons. Or you could have had six and one quarter gallons. Either way would be fine. All right, let's have you try this one. This time you're turning quarts into pints. So you're gonna start out, let me get you started. You're gonna have um, what you know times your conversion factor to get the number of pints in your answer. So pause your video and try this. If you don't know how to start, we're going to be doing it together. Okay, so we're going to start with what we know, which is the 25 quarts over 1. Then I know that I need to get rid of quarts because I'm turning it into pints. So quarts go on the bottom, pints go on the top. Now I need to look at my diagram to see how many pints are in a quart. So pints are represented with P's. Quarts are represented with a Q. So there's one, two pints in one quart. So two pints in one quart. Then I simplify out my quarts. 25 times 2 is 50 pints over 1 times 1 is 1, so it's just going to be 50 pints. All right, let's have you try this one. 
Now, this one's going to be a little different. So if it is hard for you, just wait for me and we'll do it together. But um, you're going to be changing it to quartz, but you're going to have a remainder. In this problem, the way they want the answer isn't going to be in a decimal or a fraction of how many quartz. They want to know how many remainder pints you have. So you're going to put your remainder in this pint spot. So just try it. Try it by starting with what you know, times your conversion factor, and then when you get your final answer, when you do your division, your remainder will go in the pint area. So you'll have some pints, some quarts, and some pints, but you set it up the same way. Go ahead and try it. Okay, let's do this one together. We're going to start with what we know, 33 pints over 1. And we are changing pints, so that will go on the bottom because we're getting rid of it, pints to quarts. And you can look at your diagram again and see that there's two pints and one quart. So two pints and one quart. All right. Next, we're going to multi or, whoops, simplify. I forgot to simplify. we got to simplify, get rid of those pints. Reduce those down so that you just have quarts on the top. So 33 times 1 is 33 quarts. 1 times 2 is 2. And that turns into a division problem where the top number is being divided by the bottom number. So remember, we stick our bottom out or we divide that top number here. Okay, so 2 goes into 3 once. It's 1 left over. Bring down the 3. 2 goes into 13 6 times. 6 times 2 is 13 or 12 with 1 left over. So here is going to be the number of quarts. We have 16 quarts. And we have this 1 pint left over. That is our remainder with a remainder of 1. So 1 pint left over. 16 quarts, 1 pint. Okay. So they will have some in there that you have to um, use your remainder in the proper way to say that because we know that two quarts, that's what we're dividing by, two of them would make, or two pints, two of them would make a quart. And there's one of these pints left over. All right, let's change it up and move over to the metric system now, doing some capacity with the metric system. I'm going to do this first one. And um, remember that in your notes, what you need to use for this part right here, because this won't be here for you, is this metric conversion chart. And let me just show you one more time that the unit is liters, and that stands for volume. So you can have centiliters, milliliters, deciliters, decaliters, hectoliters, and kiloliters. All right? So liters is our base unit here. All right. Let's start with this, doing it this way where we move over. So this one is giving us 1.7 liters, and liters is our main unit. So liters would go here. And it wants us, this is a capital D, so it's talking about the big D instead of the little d, decaliters. So we are moving this way from liters to decaliters. And if you look here at the chart that we drew, liters to decaliters, we are going to divide by 10. So here we are dividing by 10 one time. And when you divide by 10, you are making your number smaller by one decimal place. So it will turn into 0.17 deciliter. That will be the answer for that one. Now, if you, again, don't feel comfortable just moving the decimal and you want to know why you're doing it and it makes more sense to you to use this nice little equation that we've been making up, we can put 1.7 liters over 1. Then we are going to change our liters to deciliters. There is... There is 10 liters, because that's our unit, 10 liters in one deciliter, 10 to 1. So 1 and 10. So here you're going to be doing the same thing. You cancel out your liters, and it will be 1.7 deciliters divided by 10. And when you divide by 10, again, you just move your decimal one spot, 0.17 deciliters. All right, so that's another way to get that. Let's have you try one. 
if you're not sure how to start, um, I'll get you started here. You're going to take out your chart and you are learn you are using the milliliters and centiliters. So we're changing from a milliliter to a centiliter. Milliliter to a centiliter, you're dividing by 10. So you're making not your number smaller by one decimal point. Okay, so we're dividing by 10. I'm dividing by 10, moving it smaller, one decimal point will give us 500 centiliters. Now, if you like this way of doing it, that's fine. I'm going to show you that way as well. We're going to start with what we know over one. We're going to change milliliters to centiliters. And we know with millimeters that there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. It's the same with liters. There's 10 milliliters in one centiliter. And remember, when the number's on the bottom, you're dividing by 10. So you're going to do the same thing you did up here, where you're moving the decimal one spot because you're dividing by 10. This 10 is on the bottom. So we, multi oh, we cancel, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. The 10's on the bottom, so we're dividing by 10. 5,000 divided by 10, you move your decimal one spot, 500 centiliters. And let's have you try this one. And I did draw the chart for you. So you're going to start with 40 liters. And this time you are changing that to milliliters. So you're going to want to look at your chart and see we are going liters to milliliters. You're going this way, three spots. And every time you go that way, you are multiplying by 10. Okay, so you're multiplying by 10 three times. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 again is 1,000. So you're all, there is 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. That's your conversion factor if you need it. So um, we are going to be, we just said multiplying by 10 each time. And every time you multiply by 10, you move your decimal. So starting at that 40 liters, right down the 40, you're moving your decimal to make it bigger. One, two, three times. You're adding place holding zeros. And you get 40,000 milliliters. And if you like the other way, you write down what you know, 40 liters over one, Next is going to be your conversion factor, and we have to cancel the liters, so that goes on the bottom, changing it to milliliters. We just figured out there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. So we're going to be multiplying 40 times a thousand, canceling the liters. 40 times a thousand, which has three zeros. 40,000 milliliters over one, which is the same as 40,000 milliliters. Okay, good luck.